I'm here. <laughs> you guys. Oh, glory be if this works. This is take two. Let's see. Let us see if it's going to work. Anybody there? <laughs> First broadcast failed. So let's see if this one's working. Hang on. Hang tight, folks. Never a dull moment in the world of Facebook. Um, let me grab the feed and see if I can see you, if you can see me. We're hoping all is going to work. Hmm. I don't see it yet. Good morning, good morning. Welcome everybody. We're gonna do a cute project with a bee today. We're gonna to use the bumblebee set. This bee tag set, I'll show it to you here in a second. Um, I just gotta make sure this is working because my first attempt failed. So I don't wanna to spend too much time talking to you if you're not there. <laughs> Get it, right? Let's be, let's be honest. Oh, hey, maybe it is working. Yay! All right, Crafty Chick in the house. Wowzer, Mindy sees me. Hi, Mindy, thanks for letting me know. And Debbie, thanks for sprinkling. Spread the honey, is that what um, Carol says over at Be Inspired Market, right? Uh, well, we're working with bees, so I guess we could do that too. We'll copy Carol and, Carol and Bill and say, spread the honey. Um, who knew that she would can a phrase, right? She's branded that phrase for herself. There's everybody. There's Tammy and Betty. Carrie says, text BFF. Whoop, whoop, there's my girls. Sprinkle, sprinkle from PA. Thank you, Tracy. I'm so glad you guys can see me. Hi, Susan and Diana. And there's Cindy from Wisconsin. And Brenda Vinoy is here. Awesome. Okay. Super sweet little project, but I'm going to show you some new things that maybe you haven't done before or haven't tried before. Because um, I always love, listen, I love to experiment and explore. I've been experimenting and exploring. I use my books a lot, and in my um, paid membership group, I really encourage folks to use these mixed media panel books um, to like create and explore things. Be, look at practice. If you're not sure how a stencil is going to work out, practice it in your book. Um, I love using these books because it's it's like non-committal, right? <laughs> I can tear the page out and frame it if I love a piece of work, but it just gives me a place to play, right? So I've been experimenting with this Bumblebee set and with the different um, products because this is what I love to do, you guys. I'm kind of a craft product nerd. <laughs> um, so I've been experimenting and I love to bring that knowledge out to you guys, especially to my paid membership groups. By the way, my craft therapy club doors are open today if you want to join us over there. Um, it's a shameless plug. I have to let everybody know that. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use the B tag set. In this set, you get this fantastic and large, this is a large bumblebee with the word happy underneath it. You get, i got to flip it so you can read it. You get the word honey with the pot and another bumblebee. And I love the swirl. I have, in fact, I used this last week in last week's live demo um, with the stencil of the month stencil set. And then you get the beehive, which I've been using that a lot. It's a great background. So we're gonna use all of these. Um, well, we're gonna use two of those. We are gonna use a set of the premium tags. So these premium tags, you get three in a set. I'm gonna demo on one to show you. You guys, make sure you say hello when you come on because there'll be three sets of stencils given away today. Thank you to Essential Stencil for being so generous and kind to all of you guys. Three sets today live and then replay watchers. Hello, replay watchers. And we think the majority of you who will see this will be replay watchers. Say hello, comment, replay so that you get a chance to win another set of stencils that will be given to a replay watcher. So there you have it. Hey, Gladys from Southern Indiana. Hello, hello, dear. Okay, Terry's here from West Virginia. Janet's here from Missouri. I'm here from North Dakota. We are gonna have some fun. Okay, so the first thing, I love mixing. I love mixed media, which means mixing different supplies to create a project. So we're gonna use the wood tag. We're gonna use the stencils. And I have a little panel of canvas here. And you guys, I injured myself. <laughs> getting ready just a few minutes ago I had to run across the house and get a band-aid because I'll show you what I did I mean I won't reenact it but I'll show you what not to do 
because I punctured my finger trying to get ready for this. It's all, it's all for the good. It's all for the good. I promise you. We learn as we go. I just, I bought some muslin. Actually, this is from one of my other paid membership groups. This is some leftover from um, one of my other group projects. And I just cut out this little square. I just want this square big enough to fit this guy. Okay, so I just need a square big enough to fit this guy. And what I wanted to do though, because when you cut it with your scissors, you just get those straight lines. And I don't like that. I like it to look really ratty and, and ratted out. And this is how I injured myself. So this is how you can do it. If you want to make it ratted out, I'm going to show you how. Um, you can tear the fabric, you know, put a little slit in it and tear it. You've seen people do that. This fabric's too thick. I tried, it's too thick, it's not gonna work. So here's another way that you can do this if you're having trouble with tearing your fabric and getting it to fray for you. Um, well, <laughs> in sewing, you could, you could wash the fabric and then it'll get all frayed and it'll become a tangled mess in the washer. So that's another option, but what I do I use my trusty little tweezers that just injured me. They are extremely sharp. So listen, when you do this, don't poke yourself with the tweezer. I was aggressively um, you know, fraying my fabric and I injured myself. What you wanna do, you cut your edges. So I'm gonna show you, this one's a straight edge. This one's all frayed up. This one's all frayed up. You take your straight edge there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tweezer and it doesn't have to be a tweezer. Um, it can be a stiff bristle brush, but you just need to pull out. If you don't have any nails, this is really helpful tip. Do it on a cutting surface. Um, this is my cutting mat that is like a, um, what do they call it? Um, like it's regenerating or whatever you call it. So it's, it's not gonna leave any marks in the cutting mat. You could use a cutting board. Just make sure you don't scratch your table. Um, that's it. Now your straight edge is nice and frayed. You can pull these out and throw them in the garbage and then you get this nice frayed look. I love my jeans with a fray on them. I do, I know I'm getting older and it's a really cute hip little look there. So I love a pair of distressed jeans. I love that look and I'm always fascinated by how they create that and then it stays. They do something so that you don't lose your jeans in the end. Okay, look. You get those extras that won't come off, just cut them if they're a little bit long. But I love the look of the fray. I like the fray. So I pull and tug anywhere where I wanna see more fray and it's gonna give you that nice rugged look. Okay, so that's how you can achieve that. Just be careful with sharp objects. Um, I just, I think I was trying to do it too fast and I injured myself. Let me check the comments real quick and we'll keep going. How is everybody? Where are you coming in from? What is your weather today? It's a little cool here in North Dakota, but it feels refreshing. And um, we're just, we're praying and waiting for rain. Like we are wanting the rain to come. The farmers need the rain. My husband's a landscaper. We need the rain. Okay, let's see. Love the bee stencils, Doreen says. Sprinkled, sprinkled. Thank you for the bumblebee, the little bumblebee emoji. How cute is that? Hi, Sandy. Self-healing mat. Yes, Ruth, that, those are the right words. Hey, Anne from Whimsically Knotted. What a cute name for your business. Uh, Becca just used this set the other night. I'm going to show you a new way to do it. Okay, we need to paint the bee. Um, we also need to paint our tag, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start with the B because on both of these things, there's going to be two layers and I want this to dry before I do the second layer. So we're just going to take our simple little piece of fabric and I'm going to just do a basic black B on here. Okay, so I'm just centering it. I've got my black paint. Oh, I meant to grab... Oh, I know I can use my craft mat. I meant to grab something that I could put my paint on. Craft mat to the rescue. It's all folded up. This is a really big craft mat. You don't, you know, need one that big, but I love, I have several craft mats on hand because I use them all the time. Essential stencil brush. So I'm using this set. I don't have the packaging anymore, you guys. I threw out the packaging because I use a little bag for all my stencil brushes. But here's what you get when you buy a set of stencil brushes from Essential Stencil. Little blue handle. Great branding, so you know which, when you're grabbing it out of my bag, I know which ones are the essential stencils because of this. Um, they have a nice stiff brush here. The bristles are really nice and stiff. They're not real flimsy like a watercolor brush. 
you're gonna have a really softer bristle, um, a softer set. We don't want soft when we're when we're using stencils. That's why they make brushes specifically for stenciling. The heads are all different sizes. If I hold it this way, you'll see you get four different sizes. I'm gonna try to hold it so that you can see all four at once. See, you get four different sizes. Um, and they're great, great, great quality. Don't ever leave them sitting in water, which I have done a couple of times before. And you can actually see here, I have water damage on the wood handle. See all this black right here? That is water damage. That's from leaving your brushes in water for too long. I have done late night crafting and then left them in the water overnight. And that's what happens. And it just starts to erode away your brushes. So again, learn from my mistakes. Don't do what I do. I love my brushes. Gonna use it. I'm gonna grab some of this black. It's just black paint, guys. It's just black chalk paint from Waverly. I use this brand a lot. Um, I would say generally when you're stenciling, you want thicker paint, not thinner paint. So don't, in general, don't thin down your paint. There are reasons to thin down your paint. Um, but when you're stenciling and you want to avoid bleed through, especially if you're a beginner, hey, hey, how about that? If you are a beginner at stenciling, can you comment... Can you let us know because it actually helps us a lot as brand ambassadors and for the company to know who are we chatting with when we do these lives? Are these people who have been stenciling for years? Tell us that in the comments. Have you been stenciling uh, like just for days? <laughs> you just started? Have you not started yet, but you want to, you want to do that? Tell us in the comments because it helps us to know so that we can share with you guys the information that you need based on your skill set. I'm going to try to reach this camera and get it down just a little further there. Okay, I'm putting a bunch of paint right here. I call that my paint store. So when I need more paint, I go to the store. Over here is going to be my land of offloads. See how it's nice and clean? We're going to work that paint in little round circles up into the bristles of the brush so that they go up into the bristles of the brush and so that what's left here is dry. Okay, you do not want drippy, goopy, glistening gobs of paint on your brush. You want it to be nice and dry. Okay, now I can come over here and I can apply my paint. You can apply it by, I call this stippling, the up and down motion. I gotta get this bee really centered on here. <laughs> He's like, he was a little, he was coming off the end here. You can stipple, do, 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 or you can do little round circles. You can go back and forth. I use all three, just depending on the type of stencil that I'm using, the type of um, surface that we're stenciling on, the type of paint that you have. They're all variables that will affect the way that you stencil. And just, I know that's a lot to think about if you're new, but I wanna encourage you to just practice. Just practice, listen. Practice in one of these books before you go in on your, um, you know, your boards that are going to be, or your tags or something that's gonna be the final project. Practice on a book. Practice, if you wanna try on fabric, practice on a, a, a scrap piece of fabric before you go in on your real fabric. Um, practice on, I would say, cereal boxes. Open them up and use the cardboard on the inside of cereal boxes um, so you don't have to spend any money, any more money. Um, practice, and the more you try different things, the more you're gonna learn what works best for you and which applicator you want to use, which paints you want to use. Wendy says, I'm collecting lots of stuff, but nervous about actually getting started. Oh, Wendy, I so want to encourage you to just jump right in. Honey, just, no pun intended, honey, just jump right in and have fun. The whole point of crafting and creating is to enjoy ourselves and to be creative and to let like that creativity out and have an outlet for that creativity. And it's so relaxing. That's why the name of my group my paid membership group is called the Craft Therapy Club because we all find it so relaxing. So just jump right in and have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously, okay? Because that kind of takes the fun out of it. Jump right in. Grab a set of stencils. This is a great little set of stencils to start with if you're just starting out. Everybody's loving the bees. Everybody's loving the bees. And you can use them. I feel like they can be used year-round. Look at running out of paint. I'm going to the store. I'm picking up just a tish. Coming over here, working it into my bristles. Then I can come back to my fabric and put some of that paint into the fabric, okay? Feel like you're running out again? Back to the store. Just picked up a little. Back to the land of offload where I'm gonna offload and make sure that it's nice and even. I'm losing a bristle. This is what happens when you don't take care of your brushes. Generally, 
<laughs> these brushes do not lose bristles, but when you kind of ruin your wood, the stuff's going to start falling apart on you. Oh yeah, yeah, it's my own fault. I did it to myself. My 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 father used to say, "Gracie, when I would do something like, you know, whatever, if I did something, he'd say, "You did it to yourself, girl." Gracie, you did it to yourself. I said, "I know, Dad. I know. I shouldn't have done that when I'd make a mistake or do something that made me feel sick or eat too much of something." And say, so "You did it to yourself." <laughs> We're Italian, you guys. I'm Italian. My dad was Sicilian. My mom was Irish, so I'm half Italian. And by dad. And I loved to eat like oh, the Italian olives and like salami, like cheeses with a little bit of crusty bread and a glass of wine. We would enjoy that so much. And I would, the olives, I just love olives. I love everything like that. Olives, pickles, like marinated artichokes. I love all that stuff. But it always makes me bloat because it's, it's just so salty and I eat too much of it. So I would eat too much olives and he would say, Gracie, you did it to yourself. Because then the next day I couldn't get my pants on or my ring wouldn't fit. You did it to yourself. <laughs> yes, I did. I ate too many olives again. Okay. I like to hinge this back to take a look. The fabric is sticking to my stencil. So I'm going to go this way and hinge it back. I just need to peek and make sure. So the legs are a little bit, the legs, oh, and it came off all the way. The legs are a little bit faint. So I'm going to go back in right where the legs are and add just a little more and then I'll show you what I got here. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna end up using this stencil again. Yes, 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 look, 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 how sweet is this? Look at, look at that detail. Ooh, show me some hearts if you love that. I love that. I love working on fabric with stencils. I really do. Make sure your paint is thick, a nice thick paint. When it hits the fabric, it's not gonna spread out. Think about it, if you had a thin paint, like a watered down paint, it's going to spread out and absorb into that fabric. So make sure you have a nice thick paint. These jars that get really thick on the, this has like this much paint left in it and it's really thick on the bottom. It's great for stenciling. So don't throw these out. When you're almost out, that's good stencil paint, girls. All right, let's see. I know, isn't that cute, Nancy? I'm so glad you like it. Let's see what everybody's saying. Newbie from South Carolina. Well, hello, Miss Angelica. Welcome, welcome. I love your name. I love it. Grace, you're making me hungry. I love to eat that kind of food as well, Cindy says. I, and it's a good thing I live in North Dakota because you can't get good, any of, most of the time you can't get good, especially olives. Not like they have at the Italian grocery stores in Boston. I grew up in Boston and we had lots of good stores where we could buy that stuff. Not so much here. Angelica says, I, I grew up with Italians and I love Italian food. Me too. Me, me too. In fact, I'm going on vacation this coming week with my sisters, going to Florida to meet my sisters who I've not seen in two years, so I'm really excited about that. But generally when I go on vacation, one of the first things I think is where can I eat? Like, <laughs> where can I go eat? What food can I enjoy? I'm looking for newbies. Um, Terry says, if I stencil a board and I don't like it, I just sand it down and do it over. Exactly, Terry. Thank you for telling everybody that because I just want you to relax and enjoy it and don't take it too seriously. Um, Jean has been stenciling for nine months. She's a Stencil of the Month Club member for a year and waited to build up my courage. I love it now. Just wish I had more time to stencil. Yeah, don't let any time pass. Just jump right in and enjoy it. So glad you're a Stencil of the Month Club member. Listen, if anybody wants to join that group, use my code, The Comfy Nest, and you'll get 50% off your first month. Um, also, if you shop on the website, use my code to get a discount with the stencils that you purchase or the tags, or the brushes, or whatever you need. All right, now that we have that done, I am going to paint this black, okay? Let me just grab a little paintbrush. You guys, I'm working at a new table. I'm so excited. I got myself a new craft table. I'm hoping to do um, a, like before and after posts on my website. I'm just gonna put a coat of black on here, you guys, okay? I need more paint though, because I used up most of that paint. Look at how thick it is. It's thick. <laughs> but that's good paint to work with. Um, I Let's see, so as I saying? Oh, I'm gonna do some before and after of my table. Now listen, my whole craft room is not getting a makeover. I just needed a new table desperately um, because the table I was working off of didn't have any drawers in it. So I, like, I have all these little buckets, <laughs> buckets and pails of paint brushes and scissors and glues and they were all over the table and really cluttered and I just wanted to have more space to work on the table. So I got 
the drawers so that I can put all that stuff in the drawers and then my table hopefully will be more clear. It doesn't look real clear right now, but it will be. It will be. I just, it's a work in progress. Okay, see how thick that is? It's like not even falling off there. Thick paint. Now listen, if you're working with thick paint to paint and you have trouble with it moving around and spreading, all I do is I dip my paintbrush. I have a little bit of water here. I'm just going to dip my paintbrush bristles, just the tips barely touch the water and it's going to help that paint move around a little bit more see that another tip for you my paint is very thick i want i'm going to distress this a little bit so i don't care if the edges don't get totally covered i just want the middle covered and then i'm going to distress them back a little bit because i want it to look i like the distressed look here's another tip for you <laughs> that brought the um the, the thing is wet so what I do when I don't want to get my fingers wet I use my exacto knife to hold down whatever I'm painting so that I don't have to get my fingers all mucked up with black paint I already pierced my finger I don't need to add black paint on top of the band-aid that's already sitting there oh lordy lord I am sometimes it's just messy around here at the comfy nest the comfy nest like if you haven't hung out with me at all um Friends of the Comfy Nest, we call each other Crafty Chicks. I have a free group called the Crafty Chicks Club that you're welcome to join. I added a little bit too much water to my brush, so I'm offloading some of that. Join the Crafty Chicks Club if you want to join that free craft community to learn, be inspired, to grow, to get discounts and special offers from here, me at the Comfy Nest. Um, if you're a Stencil of the Month Club member, you join that club, there is a private group just for Essential Stencil fans who are a member of their monthly club. And that's a fantastic group. The, the ladies in there, you guys who are in there, give me a shout out if you're a member. Give me a shout out and tell me if you're a Stencil of the Month Club member. You ladies are so inspiring. And the brand ambassadors are in that group. The staff members are in that group. Stencil of the Month Club members are in that group. It's a private group. But everybody's sharing their projects and what they've done and how they've done it and asking questions and helping each other along. And we along and we talk everything from brushes to top coat to stencils to when's the next um, release coming out, like all the things, all the things that you would want to know. So again, use my code, the company Nest, if you want to get 50% off your first month. That group, hugely inspiring, so many brilliant creative ladies in there. Wow, I love seeing what you guys do. All right, we're giving this a quick dry. There's one little spot I can see that's hanging on that's still wet. I'm going to distress the edges a little bit. I want to distress the edges. Oh, really old block from the Dollar Tree. Let's see who's here from the Stencil and Month Club. I'm sure we're getting some comments. Dorothy's a member. Hey, Tina, text BFF. Listen, the ladies who are on my text service, uh, it's right there, my number. The ladies who are on my text service, and there are a couple of guys, like my son is on there. Um, anyway, I call them my text BFS because it's a two-way texting system. So I can text everybody at once and say, hey, I'm going live. But they can text me individually and we can chit chat back and forth. And I love it. It's been so fun. All right, I'm just going to stress this back because I'm going with a distressed look here. So let me distress these corners. I want to see the wood. So you see, I'm just distressing the edges so that that wood comes back out. Okay, I love that look. I know it seems silly to put it on and then take it off, but using the sanding block really gives you, first of all, it gives you really smooth paint, but it also gives you that distressed look. Now, I told you, we're going to layer on top of this. We're going to layer something else that maybe you've never used before. I think it's going to be interesting. I've been playing and discovering. I'm going to go across the whole thing because I've done the edges. And you can see how it changes um, the paint a little bit. I'm going to go over the whole thing with something else you're going to see in a minute. And then this is going to go on top. But first, let's just get this all to match kind of the distressing and I want the edges a little bit more just a little bit more distressed working up a sweat here girls it doesn't take much I thought about that when I went to get the band-aid and I got myself some water speaking of ran across the house to get that stuff 
I came back out of breath and I thought, really, the house isn't that big. I'm just really out of shape. Okay, here we go. Not perfect. Doesn't have to be. I'm going to layer something on top of here. Plus, this is going to go on here too. Now, what I wasn't, I wasn't even going to use, this has the word happy underneath and I wasn't going to put it on here. But actually, it will fit, you, you guys. Guys, it'll fit. I think I am going to put it on there. I wasn't planning on it. But it'll fit. So three layers on this one. We will do the word happy. It's a little project, so it's not going to take long. What I want to do, though, I've been using this a lot, the honeycomb. I love the shape. And I am a huge fan, you guys, of patterned stencils, stencils with patterns, because I use them all the time in paper crafting, in my art journals, and in my junk journals, in my projects. They make wonderful backgrounds. They're wonderful for making textures. So we're going to use this with a wax to add some, um, like to make this background show this. Nancy says she hasn't joined yet, but she's planning on it. Join friend. Use my code, the comfy nest. Get your discount and join us. You can cancel anytime. You can pause it if you want to. Um, what I want to do is I want to cover this whole thing. Although keep in mind the B the B is big and he takes up like the whole space. So I really don't even need to cover the whole thing. I just really need to cover the bottom and the top because this guy is going to cover the middle here. Um, so let's do it. I'm going to grab wax. So I have this little bit of wax. You guys are going to ask. It was on sale. I was shopping on a website. I don't remember which one. It's called, it's by Thinabare, if you know that brand. It's called Opal Magic. It comes in all different colors. So I just grabbed the one that made the most sense for this project. It's a tiny little thing of wax and most of them have a really cool sheen to them. So I have a paintbrush that I use specifically for waxes and I'm going to dip it into the wax. You guys, you need the tiniest little bit. I'm going to dip it into the wax. I'm going to come back over here to my craft mat and I'm going to offload some of it. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to use my stencil. I want as much of this honeycomb as possible. So I'm trying to place this so that I get a bunch of it. I really want it to show. Knowing that this guy's going to go here, I don't need it to show everywhere. <sighs> Fabric. Fabric in the way. All right, let's do this because then I'll get a bunch of it like this. Wax on my brush. I'm going to come in do, and I'm just going to stencil the wax right over. You're going to see it's going to add this really cool sheen because it's like a I want to say it's not, I wouldn't use the word metallic, but it has like a pearlescent sheen. This wax, you could use a metallic wax. You could use paint. You don't have to have a wax. I just wanted to show you because I love exploring and trying products and I love like seeing how things work together. I just wanted to show you the wax gives it like, oh, and it smells, it smells really good. I don't, I, I can't even tell you what it smells like, but it smells really sweet. It smells really good. Um, I can't, like, you have to explore and try different things and then decide what you like. Um, but look at what this does. It's just, a, it's just a simple little thing of wax, but you can really see it. Now you can use a paint, you don't have to use a wax, but this does add a sheen that is like a pearl sheen and it's subtle, okay? So it's on top of the paint. And it's a little bit neutral. Like I said, these, these waxes come in different colors, but you see how it just adds the honeycomb. I'm going to have a hint of a honeycomb around my bee, which I think is going to be so cute. Let's do the bottom. And then, then we can decide if we want to add the word happy and I'll let you guys vote. I'll let you vote. Uh, the bees are so cute, Karen. I completely agree with you. I love the bees. I love the bee stencil. Now listen, if I put this stencil directly on my, my, um, tag there is a margin what's the other word i could use there's a band of plastic holding the stencil together that creates a frame and i don't want the frame i want the honeycomb to go from edge to edge almost so i'm going to turn this this way so that it covers more without that frame i don't want the frame i just want the honey the honeycomb okay Grabbing some more of that wax, T the tiniest, look at how much I got there. Just the tiniest little bit. Land of offload, same thing, work it in into the bristles. Then I can come over here 
and I'm just little round circles, I'm adding that wax. I'm going for a distressed look, so I don't go for perfection anyway. <laughs> I'm not really going for perfection. I don't mind if it's a little mucked up. Let me check comments. Patricia says, I love these stencils. Don't we all? Don't we all, girlfriend? All right, I'm just spreading, spreading out that wax to leave that sheen. I'm gonna need just a little bit more. No, nope, more than that, girlfriend. Okay, there we go. And the happy, if we decide to put the word happy, it can go right over this. But I'll show you what we got. I'm super visual, so as I go, I like piece things together and then decide, is that what I want? <laughs> no, and then I make a decision what to do next. Oh, this is kind of addicting. Like I could just, ah, it smells so good too. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I was using some hair product the other day, some new mousse that I bought. Um, man, it smells good. I was like, yay for good smelling things. I'm a huge fan of good smelling things. Okay, so easy, so, so easy. Look what we got so far. And it does have a sheen. If I turn it this way, you'll see how it's got like a little bit of a shine. I wouldn't call it metallic. It's more like a pearl, pearly sheen, but you can definitely see it when the light hits it. So the, the paint that I put on there is a chalk paint. So it's really, um, listen, here's the thing. These paints here, these paints here, Amanda, this is, I think, solely what Amanda uses, is this, this kind of paint. I don't love this paint. It's not my favorite. There's nothing wrong with this paint. It's Amanda's favorite. I think it's her favorite. I'm speaking for her because she always uses it, and we actually talked about this once. I don't love it because it leaves a sheen. I don't want a sheen. If I want a sheen, I'm going to put wax, okay? <laughs> or some kind of thing to make a sheen. Most of the time, I want matte paint. That's why I love to use the Waverly, because it's a chalk-based paint. Chalk-based paint with a wax on top, you get that really matte background with that pearly top, okay? This is the part that I love. This is why I say I'm like a craft supply nerd, because I love to think through like, okay, that paint's not gonna work really well with a wax on top, because it already has its own shine to it. You want something dull, to really show, at least, anyway, I do. You can do whatever you want. That's what I always say, it's you, you do you, girls. Guys and gals, you do you. Like, whatever you like, that's what you should do. Carrie loves the look. I'm glad you like the look. I'm glad, I'm glad. I do too. See, Maureen, I love the subtle shimmer of the wax, and it would not show up as well on one of those other paints because they have a, a shine to them already. So you want a dull paint underneath, like a chalk paint. Or a clay-based paint, mineral-based paint, that kind of thing. We have to decide. I need your vote. This is what we got so far. So simple, so easy. I'm going to do something to the B too, I think. We're going to add something else to that B. But should we put the word happy underneath? Should we do it? Or should we leave it just the B? Just the B with the honeycomb. Okay? Happy or no happy? And not that we don't want to be happy, but... Add the word, don't add the word. You guys vote. I'm going to look at the comments here in a minute. Should I just leave it as it is? Or should I nudge him up just a little bit and paint on the word happy? And I would paint it in a chalk-based paint, a flat chalk-based paint. And I would pick like the color that matches this so that it's all coordinated, right? Or as close as I can get to it. Let's see what you guys are saying. Barbara says, no happy. Don't use the word happy. Hey, in California, Gloria, we are voting. Who wants the word happy? Who says leave it out? Who says add it in? Yes, there are different types of wax, Mindy. This wax is like a, um, look at how tiny the tin is. It's this tiny, tiny little tin meant for being an embellishment, right? You can buy big cans of wax, big, big cans of wax. I've probably had this for five years. This is for waxing furniture in big pieces. It's, it's. They're both waxes. This one is a clear wax that's not gonna, it's gonna just coat and protect. This one has a sheen to it, a pearlized sheen, and it comes in lots of different colors, meant to be like an embellishment. So yes, there are different kinds of waxes for different uses. I have a little bit of wax coming out of my container here. I wanna get that over there so it doesn't mess something up. Okay, word or no word? Diane says use the word. Mm. Joyce, yes, just, 
and there's no right or wrong way to use them. It's just knowing. She says, it's a good thing to know because I have a bunch of these acrylic paints. There's no right or wrong. There's not one that's better than the other. I think just as you start using different craft products, you're going to start to learn the ones that you like and don't like. No different than the makeup. There are some eyeliners I like from some brands and I don't from others. Now, I have a foundation that I use that I love. It's the only thing that I use from that brand. <laughs> My eyeliner comes from a different place right? My blush comes from a different place. If you just get to know as you use stuff, but it takes using the stuff to know. So just get in there and practice in your practice books. Um, I have one vote for happy, one no. Jean says leave it as it is. Mm, Carrie said no wood. I don't know, Carrie, do you mean no word? Oh, no word, she means. Just the bee, Tracy says. The honeycomb is enough, Tammy says. Um, Janet says I use that paint when I'm stenciling and lightly sand it. It takes the sheen off. Well, there you go, Janet. Charlotte says, no word, just the B, Teresa says. Leave it off, everybody says leave, leave it off, okay. Oh, Gloria said she likes the happy, but Doreen said leave it out, Brenda says no. Tina says leave it out, Judy says not sure, there are so many times I'm not sure, that's why I love crafting with you guys, because you can help me decide. It's, I always say it's like being at a craft retreat and leaning over to your girlfriend and saying, hey, what would you do? Look at this, what do you think I should do here? Oh, most of you are saying no happy. No happy. Me too. Donna says, I'm, I'm joining late, but I'm glad I've, I've caught you. Okay, let's leave it off. Let me get my paintbrush in water. Don't leave it there. Don't leave it there. My wax brush, I don't ever put in water. It's a wax. I use this for my little waxes. And what I do is I just take my clean rag and I get the excess off and then I leave it. You can clean this, but you would want to use um, a special cleaner for it, wax brush. We're not gonna get into that. That's another thing. Okay, the consensus is to just leave it. So what we have to decide now is how to attach this here. Now, were you guys here the day I did this? I, what did I do this with before? But I put fabric on top of wood and I had the hardest time getting my little nails in there um, I, I saw Amanda doing that recently and I was giggling because I thought, you know what? I'm so glad I'm not the only one. Okay, before I decide, okay, I have an idea. What I wanted to do is I wanted to bling up the bee a little bit. So I'm going to use um, some diamond dust and glue. We're just using glue and we're going to glam up this bee a little bit. So I'm going back to... My stencil, it's dry. My fabric is dry. Let me get this stuff out of the way so you can see. I'm done with the black paint, so I can put that away. All right, little cleanup session here, girls, so we can get ready. We're gonna diamond dust this fabric. I think it can be done. I've diamond dusted fabric before, so let's just try it with the B. I'm gonna put this right back on top. It's gonna help me. Now you could fussy paint on the glue onto your fabric why be fussy just let the stencil help you do the work the thing with putting anything but paint on here make sure you clean your stencils if you're using adhesives if you're using a texture medium you can use your stencils with so many different things if you're using a glue you're using a glitter just make sure you clean them right away that way they don't get so mucked up that you can't use them regular paintbrush i just need a paintbrush to put some glue on here this is i believe just mod podge Okay, I'm gonna grab the glue and I wanna get it on the B. I'm gonna stipple it up and down again because I only want the glue. I'm just gonna try to do the body first, see what we get, and then we can do other things later if we want, if we can do the wings later. I don't think that the, the, the um, diamond dust is big glitter. It's not little glitter, it's big. It's big chunks, like shards. It almost looks like shards of glass. I think it's plexiglass, actually. Um, but I don't think it's gonna, the wheeze, the wings, the wheeze, the wings are so intricate, I don't think that the glue will, or the diamond dust will stick to it real well, to be honest with you. But I'm really loading up the glue here. You can see it, it's white on top of that black. And then we're gonna take this diamond dust, and I should do this on something. so that I can get the diamond dust back in the jar. And we're just gonna spread this diamond dust. And you wanna do this kind of quickly because you don't want your glue to dry before the diamond dust has a chance to settle in. But I'm gonna shake this around a little bit. I want it to really settle into that glue. 
And then the glue, you know, Mod Podge is like, it's um, milky, but when it dries, it'll be completely clear. And the diamond dust is completely clear. So when, I'm trying to knock the excess off. <laughs> it's just such a tiny piece of cloth. There we go. When it dries, the diamond dust will be completely clear and you'll just see a black shiny bee. I'll put this aside because I'll put that back in my container in a minute when I have the time, but let me show you. Oh, and the other thing is, so, all right, let me show you. Look around the head. I only put glue where the stencil was. Oh, that's so fantastic. Um, but I have a little excess between the legs and the head, so I'm just gonna use my X-Acto tool, or you could use your little tweezers, and go in and you can clean out a little bit of that dust, diamond dust that you don't want. The thing with diamond dust is it's a really, um, I'm just gonna grab, I have a clean, well, semi-clean um, wet wipe there. I'm just pulling out some of that diamond dust between the leg and the head. Diamond dust is big. I don't like working with glitter because it's so, so tiny, tiny, fine, like glitter. Diamond dust, even though it's called dust, it's big. It's chunks of glitter that are um, like strangely shaped, I would say. They're rectangles um, and they're more shards instead of little tiny um, particles. So it really shows up well, but it's big. So in tiny little places like that, if you need to clean a little bit of it out, just use, oh my gosh, you guys, what do you think? Oh, I love that. I love that. It adds such a shimmer. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Let me put this aside because we're done with that now. So cute. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra. I'll have to use diamond dust. Yes, it's so awesome and so fun to play with. So fun. Okay. Let's get it on our little board. So we have the little bit of pearl sheen and now we have the diamond dust and the fabric. So I love this mix of mediums, mixed media. I love, we have wood, we have paint, we have wax, we have fabric, more paint and diamond dust with a little bit of glue. Now, I think this is what it's gonna end up looking like. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my, um, I don't have my hot glue gun on. I think I'll use my tacky glue to glue this on. And then I thought, would it be cool to add a few studs on here? I'm thinking, girls. I'm thinking, I, I was thinking about adding some like rhinestones, but now that I see it, I actually think it's too, it, it's got enough glitter. I'm looking for, I was thinking maybe some brads. I kind of feel like it needs a little hardware. Um, so I'm gonna grab this little tool, Cropodile. It's called the Cropodile 2 by We Are Memory Keepers, okay? It, it is like a nail brad pusher thingy. <laughs> it, it, I don't know, it's like, it's a hole puncher and you can do um, nail brads in here. Is that what they're called? These little eyelets or whatever they're called? What do you call these ladies? Help me out. Because I can't think of the name. I have a bunch of them. Um, and I think, actually, what color? I think I just use like a pewter color to match the best. And I'm, okay, the last time I tried to adhere fabric to the wood, I used nails and I pounded them in and I was not very good at it. So here's a way around that. I'm going to attach the metal the little grommet looking things to the fabric and then I'm just gonna glue the whole thing down. It's gonna appear to be in the wood but it's not really gonna be in the wood <laughs> because I'm not very good at that. Studs are a great idea, right? So a little bit more um, texture. We're getting a different texture here, a different sheen. Hi, Gannon. Do you wanna come say hi to everybody? I'm going down. Okay. I love, I love you too, kid. My, my son is home sick from school, you guys. This is the fourth day. He's missed all week. Um, cough, sore throat. Um, my poor, oh, are these different sizes? We better check before we, <laughs> before we do anything with them. Whole, oh yeah, these are different sizes. Well, this one's teeny tiny. I think those are all the same. Roseanne, Roseanne, I've been trying to get a hold of you, Miss Roseanne Hayes. Girlfriend, check your email, check your messages. Message me back. 
please. It's about the craft therapy club. You joined the paid membership and I can't, I haven't gotten through to you to get you in there yet, friend. Okay. All right. You put your little thing here and you squish it down. Um, I just can't remember. Does anybody remember? I may have to get on my knees to do this. Do you put the top on the bottom or the bottom on the top? I think you go upside down. First of all, let's do this. Let's punch a hole where we're going to put the brad because it makes it easier. You guys, this is a little bit of a risk because I've used this tool before, but I don't remember it. There's a way you do it. Uh, sometimes, well, I think you have to put the thing upside down. Does anybody know <laughs> these little things, these little eyelet things that I want to put on there? Do you put it upside down in the tool? Does anybody know? I think you do. I know, my poor guy being sick. I'm going to get on my knees, girls. Oh, all for the love of crafting. Down on my knees. Um, and actually, I, I did. I turned on my hot glue gun because in the time it takes me to do this. Does anybody know upside down or right side up? Here's the thing, when you don't know, <laughs> this is so funny, me down on my knees. <laughs> when you don't, when in doubt, practice it out. We're just gonna be at our new, our, a new phrase. When in doubt, practice it out. I'm gonna cut a little tiny chunk, because this is what I'm trying to put the nail brad on, is this piece of fabric. I just cut a little tiny chunk out. I'm gonna practice. I think you have to do it upside down. I think you place your little brad on this hole and then, well, first of all, you put your, you put a hole in your fabric. You got your little brad thing, your eyelet. You put it through your fabric or paper or whatever you're trying to do. And then I think you put it upside down on the little spot. There's a spot for it. Then you push down. Nope, wrong way. Wrong, I had to just flip the thing, flip the switch. Then I think you push down, but now listen, I need more strength so I gotta get on my knees off my knees. I think that's how you do it. So when in doubt, practice it out, girls. Come on. See, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And now it's stuck. Hang tight, girls. It's stuck on my machine. What the, what the what? I think I did it the wrong way. I must have. Let's try it the other way. We're just gonna go the other way. And now, here we go. There's a way. There's a right way and a wrong way. So that's what I was saying. Like when you're not sure, practice it before, <laughs> before you go in on your real project. I wasn't planning on doing this. Otherwise, I would have practiced this before we got together. All right, that felt right. Yeah, it's not upside down. So look at, there's the little eyelet on my fabric. The tool is great. The tool is wonderful. It, the, in this instance, it was the user that <laughs> was wrong. Okay, now that I know, you take, it's, I know it's so hard for you to see because i got big fingers. It's this little thing, this little brad thing. You take it. You've already punched a hole in your fabric. You're going to put this thing through the hole in your fabric. Easier without the tweezers. Then you put this thing in the machine, and it punches the hole for you. Listen, when I used to craft, um, when I used to scrapbook, we used to kind of do this manually, and I still have all those tools. But this thing does make it a lot easier if you have the strength. If you have the strength to do it. And actually, if I do it both ways, will it really like reinforce my work? Yes. So then you get like a little grommet on your fabric. How nice is that? All this work for a little bit of metal. But I really, no, I really do, you guys. I love mixing different things together to get like you have a little bit of fabric you have a little bit of glitter you have a little bit of glue you have a little bit of wax that's metallic i'm doing it both ways because i know there's only one way you should do it but i'm doing i must be doing something wrong because it's not as quick as it should be thank god for youtube videos because i watched a lady do this the other day on youtube and she just she, she said there's a right way and a wrong way i must not have been paying close enough attention because Mama Grace here, she's having some trouble. <laughs> it's so cute, Carrie, right? <laughs> Adding just a little tiny bit of metal to your project. There we go. Now we're after it. So I got three of them done. We need one more. I used one for practice, so I had to... Had to oh, uh, Mama Lord, it fell down on the floor. Okay. 
here we go. This table too, ladies, it's a little bit lower than my other table was, so that's gonna take some getting used to. You're only, you guys, you are only supposed to do this one way. You shouldn't have to do it twice. I think it's because I'm weak, and I'm, I think that was the wrong way to do it. But I got her done, we got the job done. All right, memory keepers, you can go aside. So now we have little grommets. With our B, I'm just gonna glue it on. I'm gonna glue it, and then where are my tabs? That will be the last thing. I'm gonna put the glue on the fabric so that, whoop, come on, so that I can see where I'm putting it. And my hot glue gun is ready. There we go. Easy breezy lemon squeezy. Oh, I love mixing things, you guys. I just love it. Pushing it down with my tweezers. So I don't, it's not that hot, thankfully. So I don't burn myself. There we go. Now, now, when you buy your tags, they come with this nice, beautiful, thick jute rope that you can, you don't have to, but you can use, but you get three of them already pre-cut. I'm gonna just do a quick slip knot because the jute rope matches really well. So that even though this is a little blingy, it's a kind of rustic. I've got the distressed look going. So I'm gonna slip knot it. And then um, you can either like tiered tray because they'll stand up on their own. It can be a tiered tray decoration or just tie another knot in the top and then you can have like a little door hanger or a basket hanger or whatever you want to do with it. a little gift. You can write a note on the back. Oh my Lord, I hope you guys love it. Look at that bee. We got a little pearl going on here, pearl action, pearl shimmer. And then up here we got diamond dust glitter. How fun. Do you love it? Do you love it? I hope you do. I hope you're inspired to go create. I hope you're inspired to use your stencils any way you can think to use it. It's like, just get out your supplies and have fun. It kind of makes me think of when my kids were really little and we'd let them finger paint. You would just put the stuff on the table and let them get messy. Put a smock on if you have to, put on an old t-shirt or an apron. Don't be afraid to just dig right in and try your supplies, okay? Thank you, Carrie. She says, super cute. Sherry says, so cute. Crocodile. I got mine at Michael's, but I think Grace, yes, it is in my Amazon store. Trish, you're right. Trish, I have not seen you in a while. Trish Bruce. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you guys love it. All right, let's wait for to announce the winners. And you guys, I'd be honored if you come over to my page, The Comfy Nest with Grace, and follow, like and follow my um, group open today, The Doors. Thank you, Cindy. She says, that's so beautiful. Thank you, thank you. I'm so glad you guys love it, right? Easy, easy. Actually, I may just reinforce, I put the glitter, or excuse me, the glue um, on the base, like the main part of this. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue behind these corners to just keep, make sure the, the grommets are, you know, obviously heavier than the fabric. I'm gonna put a little glue behind them to really make sure that they stay in place. And the glue behind them will actually help glue it into and onto the fabric as well. So that, you know, you, you it really, you're not gonna lose your grommets. We don't wanna lose those grommets. I work too hard for them. I don't know that they're called grommets. I'm using the wrong word, you guys. I just can't find my words today. I cannot, I don't know what my problem is. Probably a lack of sleep. All right, we just added a little bit of glue. I'm waiting for um, winners to be announced. So just give, give Essential Stencil a second and they will pull some names. Um, not seen it yet, but I'm sure they'll do it here pretty quick. If you guys have questions, I guess go ahead and ask. I'd be happy to answer. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Renata, she gave us a bunch of bee emojis. They're so cute. So, so cute. You're welcome for another great project, Peggy. I'm so honored to have you guys, your company, and I love having your, um, your votes, like your attention when I say, hey, with the word, without the word, you can do either. The word very much would have fit under here. Um, but you can see, you know, stencil on a board. Yes, you can just put paint on there. Yes, you can and it looks adorable, but why not use all the other supplies that you have? Um, if you're a, a craft stash hoarder, like I, <laughs> anybody else collect like a crafting uh, supply collector, because that's what I am. 
The tags are sold on the website. Um, they are three by five. Yep, three by, oh, excuse me. There's a three and a half by six inch tags is what it says. So you can get them on the website. Use my code, the Comfy Nest. Make sure you do that so you get your discount. Um, I use, it's Finabare, Finabare Opal Magic Wax. These are in my Amazon store too, if you need to find them quick. Finabare, somebody's asking the brand of wax. Oh, Susie says, I love my happy mail. Hashtag happy mail. I love sending out happy mail, you guys. You guys, my paid members in, in my membership group who get the box, I love, those went out yesterday, love sending them out. Those of you who order from the website, I pack everything myself, um, sometimes with a helper, most of the time by myself. So yeah, Ellen says, craft supply hoarder here. Let's use our stash. Use the stash. You can email me. Yes, Roseanne, or go to my, go to the Comfy Nest with Grace and send me a private message, Roseanne. I have emailed you several times, but that's the problem. The email address that I have is the wrong one, so I can't get through to you. Yes, please, Roseanne, message me. All right, let's see these winners. Patricia Ann Mobley, you just want a set of stencils. Kalani Lolly, you just want a set of stencils. And Francine Pruitt, Pruitt. Pruitt, you just want to send a set of stencils. So email the company at support at essentialstencil.com and they will um, send you a set of stencils. You need to email them with your address and your email address. Yay, congratulations to the winners, Miss Patricia, Kalani, and Francine. Yay, yay, yay. And replay winner will be announced probably tomorrow or the next day. So if you're, if you're watching the replay, if you don't see that little red live button, make sure you say replay so that you can earn that chance to win. All right, you guys, have a beautiful, blessed day. Go be happy. Go use your craft stash. I'll catch up with you later. Bye. If I can reach.